Hi, my name is Dwight Owen. I'm an associate professor and a thoracic medical oncologist at The Ohio State University James Comprehensive Cancer Center. And I'd like to discuss today biomarker testing and neoadjuvant immunotherapy for resectable non-small cell lung cancer. So a brief overview of what we'll discuss today are neoadjuvant and perioperative chemoimmunotherapy strategies and the role and importance of pdl one testing. And secondly, I'd like to mention uh, the specific situation for patients with actionable mutations and alterations in the perioperative setting and the importance as well of next-generation sequencing uh, mutational testing. So as many of us are aware, the landscape for perioperative management in lung cancer has changed with the introduction of new adjuvant and perioperative chemoimmunotherapy with chemotherapy combined with PD-1 inhibitors, nivolumab and pembrolizumab. We know that high rates of pathologic complete response can be obtained with chemoimmunotherapy of around 25%, although this, this uh, does uh, range with slightly lower numbers in other studies. And we also know, as we can see it from the Kaplan-Meier curve on the right, that patients who achieve a pathologic complete response have much better outcomes in terms of event-free survival and overall survival than those patients who do not achieve a pathologic complete response. Although there are many uh, phase three studies that have been reported, there are currently two approved regimens in pre and perioperative non-small cell lung cancer, including Checkmate, eight, Checkmate 816 and Keynote 671, which I will discuss briefly. Here are the two study designs side by side, Checkmate 816 on the left and Keynote 671 on the right. A few things I'd like to highlight. Checkmate 816 included patients with stage 1B to 3A per the seventh edition of staging and also did not include patients with known EGFR and ALK mutations or alterations. Both studies randomized patients to chemoimmunotherapy versus chemotherapy alone in the preoperative neoadjuvant setting. And then Keynote 671 mandated that all patients receive cisplatin, which was different from 816. And the main difference between 671 and 816 was that as part of 671, patients received adjuvant pembrolizumab for approximately uh, to complete about one year of treatment. When looking at the event-free survival of patients who benefited from each of these strategies, there were some similarities between the studies. Although the staging criteria was slightly different with 7th edition for 816 and 8th edition for 671, it was clear that the patients with stage 3 disease had the most benefit compared to patients with earlier stages. The other important uh, finding that stood out was patients whose tumors were negative for PDL1 were the least likely to, to benefit and statistically had no improvement compared to chemotherapy uh, compared to patients with pdl one positive disease. So overall, we understand that there has been a significant improvement in pathologic complete res response rates uh, in patients with pdl one positive and stage three non-small cell lung cancer treated with chemoimmunotherapy. And I think it's important that we have multidisciplinary discussion for these patients with stage two to three resectable non-small cell lung cancer, and that PDL1 status should be included in those discussions, as it seems to guide out, uh, seems to be a guide for how the patients will do, as it does in later stage disease. Uh, which, so it's not surprising. We also understand that pathologic complete response is a new biomarker for outcomes post resection. It is really a true indicator of how the patient responded to their neoadjuvant course. And hopefully in the near future, pathologic complete response can be used as a patient, a selector for which patients should receive either escalation or de-escalation of treatment after surgery. And I wanna to turn to patients with actionable mutations and alterations in the perioperative setting. I'd like to highlight that Checkmate 816 did not permit uh, patients with known EGFR and ALK uh, alterations. And the reason for that is that we understand that these patients, first of all, do not do as well with immune therapy com compared to patients without all these alterations, but also that there are better treatments for these patients based on their known molecular profile, specifically personalized targeted therapies for these patients. Lastly, we also know that the sequence of treatment matters. So if a patient is exposed to immune therapy and subsequently to a targeted therapy like osimertinib, there's an overlapping toxicity of pneumonitis, which can impair our ability to deliver effective treatment to that patient uh, with their targeted therapy. First study I'd like to highlight is Adora. This is an adjuvant study. So there currently are no neoadjuvant targeted therapy treatments that are approved for lung cancer, although many studies are ongoing. This was a randomized phase three study of patients with stage 1B to 3A. This was seventh edition staging who completed their surgery, may or may not have had chemotherapy, and were randomized to up to three years of osimertinib therapy versus placebo. And as you can see on the right, there was an improvement both in disease-free survival and then subsequently in this publication, overall survival in those patients who were treated with osimertinib. What about patients with ALK-positive non-small cell lung cancer? This is the ALENA study, again, a randomized phase three study, this time of electinib for patients with ALK-positive non-small cell lung cancer compared to adjuvant chemotherapy. 
The primary uh, population here of interest was stage 2 to 3A, uh, although this study, like uh, the studies before, included stage 1B in the seventh edition, so really focusing on the, the current stage 2 to 3A population. And there was a clear benefit in terms of uh, disease-free survival in, in both the stage 2 to 3A as well as the intention to treat population. So in summary, what I hope to convince you today is that biomarker testing should drive clinical decision-making in perioperative non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, I think we all need to identify the logistics for streamlining testing in our clinic among our multidisciplinary team to ensure that testing is done uh, appropriately for, for, all, for these patients. I think that all patients uh, should clearly have PDL one tumor proportion score, EGFR, and ALK testing at a minimum, but ideally a comprehensive panel for all patients planned for neoadjuvant treatment and for all patients with stage 1B to 3A non-small small cell lung cancer after surgery, uh, focusing on the patients with stage two to three. For those patients who are known to be EGFR or ALK positive, there are now FDA approved adjuvant treatment options for these patients, osimertinib and alectinib respectively. And importantly, these are patients who are excluded for most, but not all preoperative and perioperative trials. And this is because uh, immunotherapy and TKIs have been shown to be toxic when given together. Uh, we also know that these uh, patients uh, have better options in terms of their tailored targeted therapy. So they should receive adjuvant targeted therapy but we need to know that before the patient goes for surgery. And that's why it's so important that all patients who are planned for any neoadjuvant treatment receive appropriate uh, biomarker testing. Thank you very much for your time.